In this simulation, we demonstrate a recommended technique for measuring throws that are taken from a circle, such as the shot put, discus, and hammer. We assume that we're using a tape measure and non-electronic distance measurement. For more information, please consult a registered National Federation, USA Track and Field, or IAAF official. Let's first look at the venue. In this example, we see a discus circle with the proper sector lines and the two lines indicating the rear half of the circle. When conducting an event from a circle, it's important to remember that the circle, seen here in yellow, belongs to the athlete, while the area outside the circle, seen here in orange, belongs to the officials. While the competitor may enter the circle from any location, they must exit and re-enter if needed from the rear half. Any other exit of the circle prior to the implement touching the landing surface or the competitor committing a foul is considered a foul. Next, we'll look at the positioning of four judges most involved in taking measurements. Judge 1 is the primary recorder and will be reading the distance from the tape measure. In addition, they will be judging the circle for violations and raising the appropriate flag, either white for a valid attempt or red for a foul attempt. Judge 2 is the secondary recorder and assists Judge 1 in judging the circle. Judge 3 holds the tape measure that will be pulled through the circle when the measurement is made. They may also be charged with timing the attempt, hence the yellow flag. Judge 4 will have the zero end of the tape for marking the impact point in the sector. They may be using a cane or long stick with the zero point attached to it to assist in marking. The competitor has made a valid attempt, the white flag has been raised, and a spot in the landing sector is marked by a red marker. Judges 1, 3, and 4 have moved into position to read the measurement. However, we can see some issues with their placement. Judge 1 is standing with their right foot inside the circle. While this is not a technical violation, it is not recommended. Remember that the circle belongs to the athlete. The reason for the official to remain outside the circle is that they may tread foreign material into and onto the surface of the circle. For example, if the competition is outdoors, they may be tracking mud or dirt onto the circle surface, creating a potential hazard or impediment. Judge 3 is also standing inside the circle. Again, this is not recommended. We can also see that Judge 3 is not pulling the tape measure through the center of the circle. This will lead to an inaccurate measurement that may create an unfair advantage for the competitor. Judges 1 and 3 adjust their positions outside the circle. In addition, Judge 3 has now moved the tape so that it runs over the center of the circle and extends out the back. An important note for Judge 4. When marking attempts in this sector, it's a good practice to treat each attempt as if it were valid. Even if Judge 1 raises the red flag, the athlete may make a verbal protest. If that occurs, the evidence of the attempt must be preserved. The exception to this would be for attempts that land on or outside the sector lines. It's also recommended that the judge remain at the point of impact until the next competitor has entered the circle before moving. A note about tape measures. As you can see from this photo of five different tape measures, the zero point is not always located at the same place. It's important to check the tape measure zero point before the competition begins to make sure that the official marking in the impact area knows where it is and that they are consistent in placing the zero point at the mark created by the implement that is closest to the circle. If the judge in the impact area is using a cane or other device, it's critical that they clearly know where the zero point is. A common misconception, especially among new officials or those new to the throwing events, is that the measurement of the throw is made to the center of the front of the circle or to the center of the stop board in the shot put. As you can see here, the tape does not pass through the center of the circle, but is pulled to the center of the arc between the sector lines. In this case, it would indicate a distance of about one meter. Another common mistake is to pull the tape to a point at the end of the arc nearest to the sector line on the side of the impact area where the throw landed. You'll notice that in this case, the measurement could be anywhere from approximately 0.95 to 0.97 meters. Again, this is not proper technique. Here we see the proper technique for pulling the tape for measurement. The tape passes over the center of the circle and extends beyond the diameter of the circle. We now have a fairly clear reading of the distance, in this case approximately 0.96 meters. 
Remember that the reading is taken from the inside of the rim of the circle. In the shot put, the reading is taken from the inside edge of the stop board.